In episode 3, we showed you the third day of the expedition. We started the day with porridge with a smile. We also had coffee before we set off. Pavel practiced paddling alone and did some basic maneuvers. Then we set off to explore Inari. This time, the wind had calmed down, allowing us to paddling out in the wider waters. However, after checking the forecast and warning of a storm already off the Swedish coast of the Baltic Sea and moving northeast, we had to make the decision to return. We also talked about canoeing and camping conditions, reindeers, berry and cloudberry picking and the tropical heat we encountered in Lapland. If you haven't seen the previous parts, we invite you to watch them. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Your opinion matters to us. You can also ask for details that may not have been in the video but are of interest to you. We are happy to answer your questions. Enjoy watching! Day 3 by finding a campsite not on the island but on the mainland. From there we made our way back to the car park where we had started our journey on night. We made coffee every day and drank it before we left and taking some with us in thermos flasks. And now it's time for the recipe. First, we put water in a kettle and add the pre-ground coffee beans. We put the kettle on the heat and wait for the water to boil, but the kettle must be taken off the heat before it boils, otherwise the coffee will be tasteless. We wait a minute or so and then put the kettle back on, but make sure it doesn't boil. A similar procedure it used to make Turkish style coffee, for example. We call it Finnish style coffee because we started making it this way in Finland. We filter the grounds with a spruce or pine branch inserted into the top of the kettle, as you may have seen in several videos and photos. you have
what we packed for the trip. We packed our luggage into three barrels, which we divided into camping equipment, kitchen and clothes. In the equipment barrel we took a tent, inflatable mattresses for sleeping, inflatable pillows, a wool blanket, sleeping bags, a small tent slab, power banks, a tarp, some paracord and a repair kit for the tent and mattresses. In the kitchen barrel we had a frying pan, a titanium cauldron, two finish cups, kuksa, two composite plates, a set of travel spoons and forks for two people, a steel kettle, a small round grill, a folding wood stove and a supply of food, the basis of which was Italian pasta, oil, chips of tomatoes and peppers, smoked bacon, cured sausage, oatmeal, jam, honey, lemon, spices, onions, garlic and chili peppers. We also had toiletries, hygiene products and repellent in the clothes barrel. In our hand luggage, kept in our kayak bags, we had snacks in case of a sudden loss of energy in the form of tubes of fruit mousse, rusks, packets of dry smoked pork sausages, nuts and dark chocolate. Natural harbors visible in the film are a very characteristic feature of the area's relief. As in the rest of Finland, it's post glacial in character. The predominant forms are U shaped valleys. These valleys follow the structural plan of this part of the Baltic Shield. They are most spectacular in the northeastern part of the lake. The passing formations are only a substitute, but they provide excellent shelter. The valleys are filled with water and their slopes, in the form of glacial polish, form a sort of breakwater of the outer harbor. At the ends are gravel and sand beaches, which as we saw in the previous episodes, a material melted by the ice sheet. This sand was the source of the sediment that formed the dune surrounding Lake Inari to the north. Up, the waves started to hit the side of the canoe on the last leg of our journey. As a result, we had to circumnavigate the island from the leeward side. <laughs> 